This is a video about depression, but it's also about nervous system health in general, so you may want to listen to it even if you don't necessarily suffer from depression. Supposedly now 10% of American adults are classified as clinically depressed, and 5% of adults and children are on antidepressant medication. And the suicide rate now accounts for more deaths than homicide and war combined, significantly more deaths. And yet it's probably not surprising that you don't really hear anything about this in the media or in general discussion because it's really a terrible indictment of our society. What's more, for every case of actual depression, there's probably numerous cases where people simply have a diminished enjoyment of life and a diminished state of nervous system health. Now we've chosen to deal with these problems through psychoanalysis and through drug therapy, and I'll give my opinions on those later. But first I'd like to say that one thing we never really consider is avoiding the problem in the first place. We, as a society, we're certainly doing a very bad job of avoiding this problem, regardless of how effective you feel drug therapy and psychotherapy are in treating it. In one of my other videos, I mentioned a French study which treated a number of diseases through a radical change back to a natural diet. And in that study, there were 16 cases of depression. Twelve of those were total remission due to treatment simply through diet. And it's been proven for decades that numerous dietary factors mitigate depression. Unfortunately, this is never brought up, or hardly ever brought up, in treatment through psychotherapy or drug therapy, as far as I know. What we always forget is that the nervous system is just like any other system in the body. It's highly dependent on environmental factors, and particularly on diet. And if you have an inadequate diet, you're not going to have a healthy nervous system. Now, when you actually look at the data, there are two overwhelming trends. One is that the suicide rate increases the further north you go, and the other is that the suicide rate increases the more a society modernizes. And this, again, would obviously point to a possible linkage between dietary and environmental factors and depression. Now, this link between the high suicide rate the farther north you go is usually explained by a number of theories regarding sunlight reacting with the body. There's also been a fair amount of study on the link between omega-3 essential fatty acid deficiency and depression. In fact, this link has been studied more than any other nutritive factors relationship with depression. You see, in our modern diet, we have a greatly reduced amount of omega-3 fatty acids. That's because they tend to go rancid very quickly and they're just not compatible with long storage periods that are normal in our food processing industry. Omega-3 essential fatty acids are also removed relatively quickly by most forms of processing, and so, again, we're getting a greatly reduced amount in our modern diet. So the two environmental factors that are studied most in relation to depression, I believe, are sunlight and omega-3 fatty acids. And there's an interesting but relatively unknown theory that sunlight interacts with omega-3 fatty acids in order to benefit overall neurological health. Most plants and animals have a much higher level of omega-3 fatty acids the further north they are. And also, most traditional diets have a much higher level of omega-3 fatty acids the further north they originated from. Now, part of this is simply because all the surrounding plants and animals also have a higher level of omega-3 fatty acids. So the theory is that in the absence of high levels of sunlight, omega-3 fatty acids are extremely beneficial. And yet, in today's modern society, we get an extremely reduced amount of sunlight and an extremely reduced amount of omega-3 fatty acids. Also, depression and nervous system health have sometimes been linked to an improper calcium and magnesium ratio. See, in our modern diet, we eat a lot of dairy, and the absorption of calcium tends to overwhelm the absorption of other minerals in the diet, particularly magnesium. And this leads to an unnatural ratio of calcium and magnesium in the body, which has been linked to a number of problems, including depression. Now, there are other dietary factors which have been studied and proven to mitigate depression and to increase nervous system health. One is higher level of B vitamins in the diet. Nervous system health is almost certainly dependent on a wide array of dietary and environmental factors. And as I've said in other videos, in order to optimize health, you really have to do more than just change one or two things. It's necessary to 
return to traditional practices, traditional diets and traditional health practices. Traditional societies have a lot of health practices, both dietary and otherwise, which we've completely forgotten today. And uh, they're too lengthy to go over in one video, but I do cover about a dozen or so of them in my book. So now that we've developed this epidemic of depression in our society and many other modern societies around the world, we treat it first by psychiatry through drug therapy. In my opinion, you can break down a lot of these drugs into two categories. One is uppers, which have been around for thousands of years and are basically proven not to work long term. If there were any upper that worked long term, I'm pretty sure almost everybody in the human race would be on it. The second category of drugs I think you can just call drugs which deaden your level of consciousness. And again, these have been around for thousands of years. Look at the high level of alcoholism in many traditional northern societies. And certainly this is a way to block out psychic pain by deadening your level of consciousness. That's why you hear so many people who are on antidepressant medication say that they feel like they're in a fog all the time, or they feel like they're a zombie, or they feel like they're asleep all the time. They've deadened their level of consciousness in order to block out this psychic pain. And it's an effective treatment, as I said, but I don't think anyone feels that it's optimal. I don't want to imply, though, that people shouldn't, in many cases, have drug therapy for depression. If you're having a heart attack, you might have been able to prevent it by eating healthy for 10 years ahead of time, but you certainly want to take drugs while you're having the heart attack so that you can live. And if you eat healthy for 10 years after the heart attack, you may not have another heart attack, but that doesn't mean that you don't need drug therapy at that moment. Next, however, is psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis is really a young field, and I always thought it was kind of a misnomer that it's called psychoanalysis to begin with, because science isn't even supposed to believe in the psyche or the soul, and so how are they able to analyze it? There are much older traditions that have been analyzing the psyche for thousands of years, whereas psychoanalysis has only been doing it for a few generations, and unfortunately that field was founded and carried forward in many cases by people who didn't have the best psychological health to begin with. Now, psychoanalysis certainly does have success in treating people, largely because they've copied their most successful methods from other groups or other societies. But in order to really understand the psyche, I feel it's extremely useful to look at what much older and probably wiser traditions are teaching us. Two good books that I would recommend along these lines are The Art of Happiness, which was written in collaboration with the Dalai Lama and an American psychiatrist, and the other is The Mastery of Love, which was written by Don Miguel Ruiz and is supposedly based on traditional Toltec knowledge. Now before I end this video, I'd like to say that as you can probably see, I am biased in favor of dietary and natural cures for depression, but I think a little bit of bias is certainly warranted considering the enormous amount of bias which we currently have in favor of drug therapy. I certainly encourage anyone to seek out as many treatment options as possible and to not take my or anyone else's word as the final authority, but simply to use what works best. In my opinion, the most important thing really is to recognize that this epidemic of depression which our society suffers is not a normal condition. We get these problems, both depression and many of our other modern problems, because our society is severely out of balance. Our diet is severely out of balance, our finances are severely out of balance, our resource consumption is out of balance, and although we don't always recognize it, our individual and collective psyches are severely out of balance. And it's not pleasant to face these problems, but once you do, you can begin to find solutions.